Um, from where we left off, I think the last time we lecture was last Wednesday. Example five. Remember, we're solving for x with radicals. What was the rule? What do you do first with radicals? Get it alone. So if I need to get it alone, x plus 3 to the power of 1 half, that is equivalent to what radical? Square root, OK? So you can right away write it as a square root. If you are very comfortable with exponential, would you be able to keep it in exponential? Yeah, yeah that's a personal choice. Okay. <coughs> How would you isolate? Okay. Chloe, what would you do first to isolate the radical? Right now, it's not all by itself, so I may not square both sides. I need to do something. Justine? Yes, ma'am. So now you have square root of x plus 3 equals to x minus 3. Is the radical all by itself? Yeah. So how do we undo, Billy, square roots? OK, I'm sorry, what? Square both sides, OK? Because what you do to the right, you do to the left and vice versa. Then on the left-hand side, what's left over, Kylie? Very good. That's why we square both sides. The radical and the power of 2 will undo each other. On the right side, is it x squared plus 9? No. No. What are you going to do? Foil. Foil. Thank you. Way to go. OK. Write it out twice. Now, if you already know how to foil without writing it twice, that's OK. You do your thing. Just meet up with me at the end. All right, foil. Let's go slowly. x times x is what, Amina? Very good. X times negative 3 is what, Jason? Uh, X times negative 3. Oh. Say on task, please. Negative 3, Lewis, times X. Great. Negative 3 times negative 3 is what, Ashley? Very good. So let's combine like terms. X plus 3 is X squared. Minus how many x's in the middle, Kelly? I think I think you got ahead of us. I think you're one step beyond us. Right now, I'm going to do step by step. Is that okay? So I'm going to have minus 6x plus 9. I think you're a, a step too far for us. We'll come back to minus 7 right now. Okay. So Kelly was one step ahead of us. x plus 3 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. Remember, you're solving for x. We did this in Algebra 1. We did this in first semester. What is your next move? You have to make one side equal to 0. Which side is going to move? Yeah, the x plus 3. How do I move that? How do I undo that? Subtract x at the same time. Can I subtract 3? Yeah. Yep. OK. So I did that. I'm going to move over here because I'm out of space on the bottom. That means I have 0 equals. Claire, what's on the right side now? Beautiful. Now, what do you want to do? Skylar, what do you think the next step is? We should. All right, guys, take a minute, get a head start on factory. I'm going to call on you, just give me the factors. So Max, can you give me the two factors, please? X minus 6 and X minus 1. Good job. Take each factor, set equals to? Zero. zero. So X minus 6 equals to 0. X minus 1 equals to 0. That means I'm going to come up with X equals to 6 and X equals to 1. Should I box those up right away? No, no I should go and check. Remember, checking it to the radical form is the same thing as exponential form, right? Most of us can easily check with the radical form. Here we go. 6 plus 3 is? 9. Square root of 9. 8. 8. Whoa. 
Four nine is three. Three plus two. Five. Six minus one. Five. Can I keep six? Great. Let's check one. One plus three. Square root of four. Two. Two plus two. Four <coughs> equals one minus one? No. Which one are we getting rid of? The one. Okay. So the only thing I can write is the one. I'm sorry. The only thing I can write is the six. I have to get rid of the one. So the rule is always isolate the radical. Well, that rule is great and dandy if you have one radical. Oh, shoot. You have two radicals over here. Technically, you can go and straight up square both sides. But when you have two radicals on one side, squaring both sides with two radicals will be a bit more difficult. So in recommendation, when you see two radicals, I want you to move one of it to the other side. Again, you have two radicals, move one of it to the other side. Which one would you like to move? Yeah, but that's already negative. So if I move to that side, I'm going to have a positive. So move this radical. There's nothing wrong at all if you square both sides right now. It's just that you're going to have a lot more work to do. Okay. So, oops, I need to add that. Sorry, I'm going to do step by step. If I add it to that side, I'm going to add it to this side. So now I have an x plus 8 equals. You can write negative 3 plus, or you can write square root of x plus 35. Minus. That's a personal choice. I normally like to have a positive sign in the front, so kind of write it like that. Great. Now you can go in and square both sides. The left hand side is easy. What's left over, Danny, on the left hand side? Yeah, because the square root and square power, they undo each other. But the right hand side, can I straight away write x plus 35? Plus 9? Yes or no? no? No. Just like what we did over here, we have to write it out twice and do what? Foil. Okay. So I'm going to write it out twice and slowly foil this out. So we're going to write x plus 35 minus 3. I'm going to write it out twice. Okay, and slowly distribute. I'm going to drop the x plus 8 down. Here we go. Rad x plus 35 times rad x plus 35 is what, Maurice? Rad x plus 35 is what? Yeah, the two radicals will definitely undo each other. Then, next one, rad x plus 35 times a negative 3 is what, Jaden? Beautiful. Good job. In the middle, negative 3 times rad x plus 35 is what? This one goes to Matt. Negative 3 times rad x plus 35. We're in the middle now. Sorry, oh, uh, negative, three. Mm -hmm. yeah. negative 3 times rad x plus? Very five. Very five. We are on the end. Negative 3 times a negative 3 is what, Saxon? Perfect. Can I combine like terms on the right side? You have a 35 and a 9. What would that make? 44. Okay, so those two. Can I combine two of those things? Yeah, what would that one make? Good morning. Hello, I need my book Delaney? Okay. So, Wyatt, how many radicals now do we have? <coughs> Negative 3 times rad, huh? Negative 3 rad x plus 35. Another negative 3 rad x plus 35. Make a total of how many rad x plus 35? Negative. Wyatt, negative 6 what? Times square root of? Do you guys agree with Wyatt? Guys, can you add 
Do you do anything with the radicals? No, you just kind of like, it's kind of like saying negative 3x and another negative 3x, which just makes a negative 6x. The radical maintain the same when you add or subtract. Okay. On the left side, I'm going to drop down this. Now I'm back to how many radicals? Guess what? Now you're back to the easier questions. What do we do now? What's the step number one on the easier questions? Isolate the radical. Oh, man, so much work. Yes, it is. All right. So I'm going to subtract x at the same time. Can I subtract 44? Mm -hmm. So now this side is bam, 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 bam. All right, x and x, what happens? Oh, yeah. What's 8 minus 44? Negative 36. Okay, equal to negative 6 square root of x plus 35. What do we do now to get the radical, Valerie, all by itself? <coughs> Valerie, what do we do to get x, get the radical all by itself? Divide by negative 6. Okay, negative 36 divided by Allen, negative 6. We'll make it a what? 6 equals square root of x plus 35. Box it up? No. No. Now what? I have to square it again. What? Yes, that's what? Okay. Square it again. 6 squared is what? 36 equal to? Subtract 35 from both sides. x equal to? 1. When you cry, you check and it doesn't work? Let's check it. 1 plus 8 yeah. is? 9. Square root of 9. Three. Great. 1 plus 35. Six. Square root of 36. 6. Six. Times six. negative. Well, 3 minus 6. Yes. Can I keep it? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. We have one last example, and then I'll let you guys start. I'm going to show you guys how to do this two ways. So some of us are really good in exponential, just have to be very cautious. Okay. All right, last example in solving radicals. x plus 5 all raised to the power of 2 divided by 3, or the power of 2 thirds equals 4. Okay, so here's method number one. Some of you are extremely good and more comfortable with rational exponents, so you can technically raise it to a certain power. What power can I raise it to straight up? Three. Or three over two. Okay, so those of you who said, I'm going to do both ways, okay. This is the original. You can raise that to the power of, let me, power what? Three over? 2 okay, equals to 4. What you raise to one side, you have to raise it to the other side. How come you are okay to raise it to power of 3 halves? Because it what? It just cancels Yeah, so power to the power, I'm going to multiply. When you multiply these, the 2's are going to cancel, and the 3's are going to, and then what do you end up with? X plus 5, okay? So you have x plus 5 right off the bat. This is method number one. And it has a little bit of a flaw. On the right side, would you agree that it's just square root of 4 to the third? Yeah. But I'm going to keep on going. Well, square root, there's four, th there's four threes in there. That's really now, can I take out a 4? That means I have one 4 left. What's square root of 4? 2. two. So x plus 5 equals 4 times 2. x plus 5 then is equal to 8. That means I need to subtract 5 on both sides. x equals to 3. Okay. I solved it using exponential. Some of you, again, like I said, super comfortable exponential. By all means, use it. Then I'm going to prove to you where you have to be very cautious. Now, second method is when I'm going to use radicals. Would you agree I can rewrite that easily using the third root? 
of quantity x plus 5 to the second power, and then equals to 4. That is an equivalent of my original. True or false? True. Okay, the radical's all by itself. What's your next move? Cube. Yeah, raise to the third power on both sides. Then the third root and cube it means they undo each other. Okay, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to cube it. What's 4 to the third? I'm in. 4 to the third. Thank you. Good eye. 64. So x plus 5 in quantity still, square equals 64. Now you can see this. You can do this two ways still in here. You can take the square root right away. Or some of you say, well, can I foil it, make it equal to 0 and factor? Yeah, either way, you're going to come up with the same thing. So I can immediately take a, a what? Square root. Because what do we need to do to undo square power? Square root, same thing as you would use the square to undo the radicals. So I'm going to go in and, okay, but here's the part where, remember in Algebra 1, and even at the beginning of this formula, pretty much every time we take the square root and there is a variable involved, how many answers are we going to come up with? Two. So it's going to be x plus 5 equal to what? Two plus or minus eight. If there's a variable involved, we don't know what that variable is. So it can be a positive or a negative sign. So this comes out to be <coughs> x plus five equal to either a positive a or a negative a. Then we have two equations, x plus five equals to eight or x plus 5 equal to, to what? Negative 8. Well, this one, we know it equals to 3, right? This one, what's this side? Whoa! I thought you said whatever method we use, we should always have the same answers. You did say that. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's check. 3 plus 5. 8. Eight, square that. Four. Third root of 64. Four. Can I keep it? Yeah. Wonderful. Three looks amazing. Negative 13 plus five. Negative eight square. Always positive. One, negative three. Third root of positive 64. <coughs> what? I can keep both? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. I only have one answer over here. So tell me, what is the flaw? Or what did we forget over here that we didn't catch? Because we are not used to solving these in rational exponents. Plus or minus where? Factor of four. Why? Why would we need a plus or minus here or here or here or here? Because we don't know all the positive ones. Even, even, notice how we raise both sides to the three over two? Yes or no? A 3 over 2, technically the denominator is what? A 2. If you have a denominator of 2, that's the same thing as taking the square root. So even though we were using exponents, but the background of that is still the square, the square root. How about if, we, if there's a question that we raise it to any even denominator, would we always have two answers? Yeah, that's kind of like taking the fourth root. The sixth root, the eighth root, right? So if whenever you have an even index, this should always come out to be plus or minus. So on the other side, we were supposed to as well, guys, have a plus or minus, except that we were not aware and we didn't understand why if I told you right off the bat that you would have to have that. So if I have plus or minus, would you agree that I would come up with the same two answers? Mm -hmm. And we check them, and they are both okay to keep. All right, that is an egg roll, y'all. Go ahead and work on your homework as I stamp on today's.